A portion of this video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. The iPad Air is an incredibly capable device, and if you've seen any of my other iPad videos, you'll know that I use it every day for productivity, uh, content creation, as well as content consumption. But to do this and to get the most out of your iPad, you need to have a good understanding of its essential features and settings to optimize performance as well as battery life. So today we're going back to basics. I'll be demonstrating today's ultimate guide on my iPad Air 5, but everything I cover will apply to all models, from the regular iPad to the iPad Air, as well as the iPad Pro. As always, I will leave the purchase links below the like button. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to start, let's take a look at the lock screen. Now first, to wake the display, you can either touch anywhere on the screen to wake it up. Alternatively, you can also click on the top button that you'll find in the top right hand side of the iPad. And this will bring us to the lock screen. Now this will look very similar to the iPhone if you've seen the lock screen there. We have the time, date, as well as any notifications listed here. Now from here, we can swipe to the right to quickly access a shortcut and open the camera app. This is great if you're in the moment and need to get a quick shot. Uh, and we can also swipe up from the bottom to unlock the iPad. And you can either do this uh, using a passcode or Touch ID if you have it set up. If you have Touch ID set up, simply take your registered finger and then press and hold it on the top button to unlock the iPad. Don't worry, if you've not already set up Touch ID, I'll show you how to do this in a sec. And then unlocking the iPad brings us to the home screen. Now the home screen is divided into three main sections. First, we have your widgets, your apps, as well as the dock. Now, before we get uh, into these in more detail, I wanna show you how to take a screenshot. This is something that is very useful and easy to do right on the iPad. So to do this, let's say I wanna take a screenshot of my home screen. Uh, we're gonna press the top button and the volume up button once. Simply click them at the same time. It will then take a full screen screenshot. You'll see this here in the bottom left. Uh, we can go ahead and open it, and we can annotate it. So let's say I wanna uh, highlight an app, then we could go ahead and press done, save it to photos. Uh, we can also share it here via the share menu in the top right and quickly send it to a friend uh, or colleague. Let's go ahead and save it to photos for now and we'll find this stored in our photos app. Now, one of the first things I like to do with any iPad or iPhone for that matter is rearrange the home screen, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at how to rearrange the applications on the home screen. To do this, simply press and hold on any of your applications until we see this secondary menu come up. And from here, we have the option to edit the home screen. Tapping on this, as you can see, will allow for all of the applications uh, as well as your widgets to sort of start jiggling in their place. And from here, we can simply move them around. So just simply press and hold with your finger and we can go ahead and bring it to the top of the page. Uh, if say we wanna move it over to another page, simply bring it to the edge of the display. We can even create a new page just for this application, bringing it once further, and then it'll be all the way uh, on the right of the iPad in its own little home screen. Now we can also create folders by, uh, by piling two apps on top of each other. So here, for example, we have the TV app uh, and the Disney, uh, Disney Plus app. These are obviously quite similar. So let's say I want these paired together. I'm gonna to take the TV app, drag it over the Disney Plus app, and as you can see, it will then have automatically created a folder uh, titled Entertainment. And even within this folder, we can also rearrange the apps, uh, as well as this, we can uh, rename the folder by tapping on the title here. A pro tip is to store your most frequently used apps in the dock. Now, the reason for this is that the dock will always remain static on screen. As you can see, regardless of which page of my applications I'm on, the dock will still be visible and those applications will always be there. Also, it's more easy to access the dock from within other apps, but I'll show you this more in a sec. So to add and remove an app from the dock, I can simply, just like before, drag it out like so. Uh, let's say I wanna bring notes back in, drag it out of that folder and put it back in the dock like this. And then once you're happy with the layout of your home screen, we'll go ahead and press done in the top right of the screen. And as you can see, our apps will now snap into place and be fixed in the new position. One other feature that I really like about the dock in particular uh, is these last three applications here. Now you'll see they're separated by this little uh, line here. And what this means is that these last three apps are actually your most recently used applications. So these will switch depending on uh, how you use your iPad. This is great if say you're using uh, an application on your second page uh, and to quickly find it again, simply check the top right of the dock uh, where chances are it will be to more easily access. Now let's take a look at removing applications. So let's go ahead and remove, uh, let's say the news app here. So to do this, we're gonna press and hold just like before, but instead of selecting edit home screen, we're gonna select remove app. And from here, we have two options. We either have the option to delete the application 
or to remove the application from the home screen. Now, deleting the application will, as the name suggests, delete it from the iPad uh, and will also clear storage. This is great if your iPad is running low. Uh, removing less commonly used apps is a great way to free up some storage. However, alternatively, you can also remove the app just from the home screen. So let's go ahead and select that option and show you what that does. So once I tap that, you'll see that the news application is no longer uh, visible on the home screen, but it is still on the iPad. And to access it, we have to go into the app library, which you'll find on the very last page of your home screen. From here, we can go ahead and search for news. And as you can see, it will still be there and available for us to access. This is a great way to hide certain applications. Let's say you have, uh, I don't know, for example, finance applications or banking apps that you don't want prominently shown on your home screen, but still want on your iPad. This is a good way to keep those a little more private and out of view. And this brings us to the last portion of the home screen, and that are the widgets. Now, widgets work in a similar way to applications. To move them around, we're gonna press and hold just like before and select edit home screen. From here, we can drag the widget around the home screen or move it to different pages if we like. Now, one of the big differences with widgets is we can also add new widgets. And to do this, we're gonna go ahead and press the plus button that you'll find in the top left corner. Over here on the right, you'll see a wide range of suggested widgets. Over here on the left, we have a range of, uh, or a list of all of your applications which support widgets. So let's say we wanna add a new widget. We're gonna go into the clock menu here, uh, and you can see we can scroll through all the different types of widgets that this uh, application supports. Now you'll see that some widgets are smaller and some are larger. Of course, larger widgets will take up more space on the home screen, but will also be able to display more information. So let's say I wanna take this uh, bigger world clock here and we're gonna add the widget to the home screen. Just like that, we've just added a new widget right on the home screen. And just like with applications, we can go ahead and move it around. Let's say we put it up there in the top left and I press done to freeze them into place. Just like on my iPhone, I would say I enjoy using widgets on my iPad, but my advice here is to be mindful of how many you are using. Widgets are essentially small applications that are constantly running and updating in the background, thus taking more battery. So my advice here is less is more, but more on battery advice later. To view your notifications on the iPad, simply swipe down from the top middle of the display, and this will bring up the notification shade where your notifications will be grouped by app. Later, when we dive into some of the settings, I'll share some really useful notification tips that you'll want to hear. And then to dismiss this window, we're gonna swipe up from the bottom. Next, we're gonna swipe down from the top right of the screen to bring up Control Center. Now, Control Center is an easy way to access some core system functions, such as turning off your Wi-Fi, activating airplane mode, uh, adjusting your brightness, as well as the volume. Uh, but I'll show you more on the Control Center in a sec, as well as how to customize it. But this is really a useful feature that I find myself using often. To access these settings, instead of going into the Settings app, simply swipe down from the top right of your display and adjust right from there. Let me know in the comments, which iPad do you have? If you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for your support. Okay, so gestures are key to using the iPad. So let's take a look at some of the essential multi-touch gestures. First, to close an application, let's go ahead and open the settings app here. Simply swipe up from the bottom of the display. This will be the same of whether you're working in landscape mode like we are here today or in portrait mode you'll know where to swipe down from when you see uh, this bar that you'll find always at the bottom of your display, regardless of the orientation of the iPad. So wherever you see this bar, simply swipe up to close the app. From here, we can swipe up and then hold to access the multitasking menu. And this will allow you to quickly see all of your open applications and switch between them. So let's say I have Lightroom open here, and then we wanna switch back to, for example, Notes, swipe up and hold, and then we can tap right into Notes from there. Now, a more quick way to switch between multiple applications is to use four fingers and then swipe to the left and right to swipe between your recent open applications. This is a feature I love using and is a great way to quickly go through uh, and scroll through between your open apps. Now, going back to the multitasking menu, again, swipe up and hold. To close an application permanently, simply swipe it off the display by moving your finger up and it will then disappear. And this is a great way to clear some system memory or if you find your app is crashing and not behaving as it should, a good way to reset it is to open up the multitasking menu, permanently close it by swiping off and then relaunching the app. Now let's talk about true multitasking. 
What I mean by this is running two applications at once. And this is one of my favorite features of iPad OS and what to me makes the iPad much more of a computer than ever before. All right, so as you can see, I'm currently scrolling in Safari on the Apple website, uh, looking through the specifications of the iPhone 13 Pro. Now, let's say I wanna take some notes whilst I'm scrolling on Safari. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the three dot menu that you'll find in the top middle of the display. And this will give us three options. First is the option to stay in full screen mode that we are currently in. Uh, and the second option is to enter a 50-50 split screen mode. And then the third option is to enter uh, what I like to call the mini screen mode. Let's take a look at both of these options, starting with the 50-50 split screen mode. As you can see, tapping on this will move the primary application over to the left of the display and will then allow us to select a second application to open alongside it. So let's go ahead and tap into notes, for example. As you can see, I can then go ahead and create a new note and we're now effectively running two applications at once. So here I have my Safari window on the left. I can go ahead and type notes right as I'm scrolling through that Safari window. Actually, while we're in the notes application, let me show you how to copy and paste. So let's say I wanna copy this little line of text, go ahead and press and hold on a word. And as you can see, that word will then be highlighted. We can then use the ends of the word. You have these little round cursors to click and drag and select as much or little text as we like. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and select that first line here. We'll go ahead and tap on copy. And then in the notes app, let's remove that. We'll go ahead and tap and then select paste. And as you can see, we've just copied text right from the Safari window into the notes application. And then from here to quickly dismiss the keyboard, we can go ahead and press this button here in the bottom right, and that will give more room to the Safari window. And then we can continue typing in notes by tapping on the notes document like so. Now with some applications, you will actually be able to resize these windows. And as you can see, primarily uh, with Apple's first party apps, that is an option. So you can see we get this little bar in between the two windows and we can actually drag this to the left or right to uh, prioritize screen space accordingly. So let's say here, I wanna give more screen space to the Safari app uh, and a little bit less to the Notes app, but of course still getting that full size keyboard to make it easy to type. We can go ahead and easily readjust the menu uh, or the window sizes simply by doing this. We can also rearrange the windows by clicking and dragging on the three dot menu. You'll see that we have one above each application. And let's say if I wanna swap these two, I can simply press and hold on that menu to swap the windows around, very easy. And let's say finally, if I want to go back into Safari and make that the new full screen window, go ahead and tap on the three dots and we'll select the first option again. And now we're back to running Safari in full screen. Now I wanna show you the third option under this uh, three dot menu here. And this is what I like to call iPhone mode. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if there's an official name for it, uh, but the reason I call it this is that the uh, application becomes, the application window becomes very small, almost akin to that uh, of what it would look like on an iPhone. So let's pull up a second application. Let's say pages here. Let's say I've got this script here from a recent video of mine. Uh, and you can see that the Safari window is now a much smaller portion of the display. And instead of running side by side to the main application, it actually sits above it. Now this is great, not necessarily to run two apps at once, but rather to quickly switch uh, between two. So for example, I can go ahead and type on this main pages document and I can very quickly dismiss or bring back uh, the second application, in this case, the Safari window. You can see using the three dotted menu, I can just swipe it off completely from the display and then I can pull it back whenever I want uh, using the arrow. And I can also bring it to the left side, bring it off the display uh, and bring it back. I use this feature a little bit less. I would say the one I use most is definitely that 50-50 uh, split screen mode that we looked at earlier. Uh, but these are really good features that to me uh, really help me get more out of the iPad, especially this 50-50 split screen uh, feature. and really makes the iPad run more like a proper computer. Before we look into the essential settings to change to optimize your performance as well as battery life on the iPad, I first wanna give a big thank you to Ridge Wallet. You guys know I like sleek and minimalistic design, and this is perfectly represented here with the Ridge Wallet. The carbon fiber 3K wallet uses lightweight and durable carbon fiber that looks super sharp. On the other hand, the Black Damascus wallet is made with this laser engraved stainless steel that feels reassuringly dense in the hand and looks especially great when reflecting light. Father's Day is just around the corner and the Ridge Wallet is the perfect gift. 
these wallets let you carry exactly what you need, eliminating the need for a big bulky wallet. The wallets hold anywhere from 1 to 12 cards and also block RFID, which means they cannot be scanned from the outside. Now, as someone who often use a contactless or tap to pay, this is a really reassuring feature to have. The Carbon Fiber 3K wallet can be purchased with a money clip or cash strap like I have here, where the Black Damascus wallet comes with both in the box. Oftentimes with cardholder wallets, it can be difficult to access your cards, but this is not the case here. To access your cards, simply find the indent in the bottom of the wallet, then push up, and then you can quickly and instantly access all of your cards. Easy. To learn more, be sure to head to rich.com slash Dion and use the code Dion at checkout to get 15% off your order. Thank you to Ridge for supporting the channel. Now back to the iPad. All right, let's go ahead and dive into some of the essential settings to change on your iPad. So the first thing we're gonna do is launch the settings application and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says display and brightness. There's a few really essential things uh, that I wanna show you in here. First is the appearance. Now the appearance will let us switch between the light as well as the dark mode in the operating system. And you'll see that completely changes, well, the appearance. And uh, I like to use both. While it is possible to, sit, uh, to switch permanently between one or the other, if you select this option here under automatic, it'll actually switch from light to dark mode based on either the uh, position of the sun or on a fixed schedule. I like to get the best of both as I find during the day, the light mode is more pleasing to look at, whereas at night, the dark mode is just a little bit well darker uh, and therefore less straining for the eyes. So my suggestion is to use automatic and switch between both. And then beneath that, we have an option for True Tone. Now, what I'm gonna do is quickly turn this off and show you the difference. You'll see that when I turn this off, the display has a slight bluish tone to it. And then when I turn it back on, it gets a slightly warmer look. Now, what does this do? Well, this uses light sensors that are positioned here in the top of the iPad to adjust the temperature of the display to best match the lighting in your surroundings. So at the moment, I have studio lights shining down on the iPad. Uh, and as you can see, when I turn it on, the display gets just ever so slightly warmer. And the whole point of this really is to make the display more pleasing to look at and better match your surrounding environment. Uh, I find this to be a great feature. I enjoy using this on my iPad, on my iPhone, uh, even my MacBook actually, uh, and generally suggest keeping this on. The only time when I suggest turning this feature off is when you're editing photos. As of course, since this changes the uh, temperature of the display, it will also adjust the accuracy of the display. And when you're editing photos, you of course want it to be as well accurate as possible. So again, my suggestion is to use True Tone on most occasions and then only turn it off when you're editing a photo. Now, a quick way to turn this off other than going into the settings app is to use control center. So swiping down in control center, I can go ahead and press and hold on the brightness toggle. And here we can quickly toggle on or off True Tone. We can also change between the light and dark mode right in the setting, as well as activating or disactivating night shift. And that's what I wanna look at next. So night shift is right here, this option here. Night shift is quite interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and enable it for now. And as you can see, this heavily changes the color of the display. Uh, it gets this very orange, yellowish tint. Uh, but why is this and what does it do? Well, as the name implies, night shift is best used at night. Why is this? Well, blue light uh, is one of the things that comes from any display in technology, and this can have a significant impact on your quality of sleep. Uh, for some people, it can even go as far as causing headaches. Night shift will literally limit the amount of blue light coming from the iPad, uh, iPad's display, hence this orangish tint, and should hopefully reduce some of those effects. This is why particularly at night, I suggest using night shift, as again, it will make the display less straining for the eyes to look at. Now we can go ahead and manually enable this permanently, but we can also set this on a schedule. So you can have it based on a time schedule or also with the position of the sun like we did earlier with appearance. But again, just like with True Tone, don't use this when editing photos as it will heavily impact the accuracy of your iPad's display. Beneath that, we have the auto lock timer. Now as standard, this will be set to, I believe five or two minutes. My suggestion is to keep this on any setting other than never. I would avoid using this setting for two reasons. First, of course, is battery life. If your display never goes to sleep, it will always be running and that will heavily, of course, drain your battery. But the second is actually the life of the iPad. 
having the display on at all times will damage the screen and the iPad by extension over time. So making sure that your display automatically turns off, whether it be after 15, 10 or five minutes is definitely going to make sure that that doesn't occur uh, as often. So my suggestion is to put this anywhere from two to five minutes. Personally, I like to have five minutes uh, as compared to my iPhone. On my iPad, chances are you're reading uh, larger blocks of text or articles and you don't want the display dimming while you're still using it. So I find five minutes to be the sweet spot. Next, let's take a look at the home screen and dock settings. So first we have the option to use large app icons. Now this is great if you have any uh, eyesight difficulties, uh, this will allow for larger icons, uh, but as a result will also mean less icons per page. So enabling this means you'll have less available screen space to work with, but again, will make it easier to distinguish and see different applications. And beneath that, we have the option to choose what to do with newly downloaded apps. We can either add them directly to the home screen or add them to the app library only. Now I noticed some people have this feature activated and are then confused when downloading applications as they won't appear on their home screen. Instead, they have to go all the way to their app library and manually pull up the application from there. I'm not sure why Apple offers this feature, but to avoid any confusion, it just makes more sense to have applications show right on the home screen from which you can then move them around. Uh, and if you like, hide them from the home screen to just show in the app library. Speaking of the app library, uh, we also have the option to show this in the dock. So if I go ahead and activate this, you'll see that the last application uh, in the dock here is a shortcut to the app library. Useful if you find yourself using this feature often. Uh, personally, I use it less, so I generally keep this off to save the space. What I do really enjoy using is the uh, inclusion of suggested and recent apps in the dock. Now we spoke about this earlier where these last three applications are dynamic and will switch depending on uh, which application you have used recently. So I definitely suggest keeping this on. But if you turn this off, again, it will clear some space in the dock and allow you to add even more apps. So earlier we talked about uh, and looked at the control center, the menu that you can access from the top right of the display to quickly access those system functions. But this can also be customized. And to do this, we're gonna scroll down to where it says control center in the settings app here. Uh, and here we have several options. First, we have the option to allow or disallow access to the control center whilst using other applications. Now, I suggest turning this off as, again, I find this to be really useful uh, to be able to access control center regardless of whether you are on the home screen or in the middle of another app. Um, the only instance where I could see someone wanting to turn this off is if, say, you are a mobile gamer uh, and, and need to swipe from multiple corners of the display and don't want to accidentally have your screen covered uh, with a menu like this, in which case you can, of course, turn this off. And beneath that is where we can actually customize the control center. So this is split into two sections. So first we have the included controls, and these are the ones that are visible when accessing the control center. Uh, so you can see, for example, we have the option to toggle uh, the mute button voice memos, uh, as well as opening the camera app. And you'll see that we have these options here. So let's say there's the mute toggle, that silent mode. We can go ahead and remove it by pressing the minus button and then pressing remove, and that will then remove it from the notification uh, from the control center. And we can go ahead and add it back by going down to the second section, which shows all of the available controls. So here is the silent mode. Let's go ahead and tap the little plus sign bring it back, and then we can also rearrange the controls uh, using this little three-lined menu uh, so we can have our most commonly used at the top uh, if we like as well. Next, let's take a look at Siri and search. Now, I really enjoy using Siri on all of my Apple devices, whether it be my Mac, my iPad, iPhone, uh, even my Apple Watch, but there are multiple ways to activate Siri. Now, by default, Apple likes to turn on the Hey Siri option. And this is a great way to uh, activate Siri hands-free without having to press the button or interact with your iPad. But this does also mean that the iPad will be constantly listening for that Hey Siri activation phrase. And this means the microphones will constantly be running and this will take significant battery life over time. Instead, my suggestion is to use the top button to activate Siri. From here, we'll simply press and hold the top button on the iPad. You'll see that then brings up Siri and we can ask any question right from there. Now, next is a really important option uh, that I highly recommend you turn off both on your uh, iPad as well as your iPhone if you have it. And that is the option to allow Siri when locked. Now, Siri can be used for quite a lot of things, including accessing your messages, your emails, uh, your call log, 
all of this information that you wouldn't want just anyone to be able to access. So make sure that you do not allow Siri when locked. This means that when your iPad is locked, press and holding the, home, uh, the top button or saying, hey Siri, will not activate Siri and thus will not give just anyone access to that private information. And this brings us to Touch ID and Passcode. Now, the first thing we're gonna need to do here is type in the passcode, so I'll quickly type mine in. And here we go. So you've probably already set up Touch ID with the initial setup of your iPad, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, in case you haven't yet, I will show you how to set it up now. If you've already set it up, I will display the time code to which to skip to to get to the next part of this guide. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new fingerprint. To do this, we're gonna select the Add a Fingerprint option, and then what it's gonna ask us to do is to place the fingerprint on the Touch ID sensor. So I already have my index finger registered. Uh, let's go ahead and do the middle finger here. So what I'm gonna do is place the finger on the Touch ID button, lift it, and then touch it again and do this repeatedly until you see this uh, little photo or infograph in the middle gradually fill up as I lift and place my finger. And there we go. All right, so we wanna make sure that we keep going to capture all of the edges. Okay, so we'll go ahead and continue do sort of these slight outer edges here of the uh, of the finger as I go around here and complete. There we go. So Touch ID is now set up and that is all that's required. Now let's go ahead and do the test here. Moment of truth. Uh, we'll lock the iPad, tap to wake the display. I'm going to use my middle finger and there we go. It automatically works and unlocks. Touch ID is great. Uh, I wish Apple could somehow bring it back to the iPhone. Uh, I'd love to see an under fingerprint scanner uh, like we get on the uh, Galaxy S22. It's just so reliable and easy to use. But anyway, back in the uh, Touch ID settings here. So we also have several options for what you can allow Touch ID to do. Of course, to unlock the iPad, we can also use it for purchases uh, within iTunes or even on the web using wallet or Apple Pay, as well as password autofill. My suggestion is to activate all of these. Touch ID is incredibly safe, reliable, uh, and very hard to replicate or hack into compared to say a password. So I definitely suggest using any kind of biometric authentication that is as reliable as Touch ID uh, or even something like Face ID if you're on the iPad Pro. And then scrolling down here to some really essential settings, and that is the allow access when locked section. Now, earlier we turned off Siri, which means that Siri cannot be accessed on this iPad when it is locked. You can see that setting is repeated here, but we also have many other options, such as the today view, search, your notifications, even the option to return missed calls. Again, these are things that you would only want those uh, with your password or say whose fingerprints you have registered on the iPad to be able to do. If say your iPad gets lost or stolen, uh, you wouldn't want any of this information to be accessible or usable without your password. So again, I suggest turning off all of these settings. And to take it one step further, I like to activate this last option here, and that is to erase the data after 10 failed passcode attempts on your iPad. I use this on my iPhone 2, and I just find this really reassuring, knowing that if my iPad ever were to get lost or stolen, at least the most important part, which is the data, is safe. But you might think, well, what if I forget my password and literally type it wrong 10 times? Will I lose all my data? On your iPad, yes but not if you have a backup. And this brings me to a really important setting, and that is to activate iCloud backup. Now, this does cost a little bit of money as standard iCloud will only give you five gigabytes, which is nowhere near enough. Uh, so you can get a 50 gigabyte plan for, I believe only $1 per month uh, or a 200 gigabyte plan, which I have, and I believe that's only $2 per month. Uh, and for that, I have a backup of my iPad, my iPhone, as well as my Apple Watch, permanently stored safely in the cloud. And these backups are done every day whenever the iPad or, or your iPhone for that matter is plugged into the charger and we'll make sure that you always have an up-to-date copy of all of your files in the cloud. That way, if your iPad breaks, gets lost, stolen, you buy a new one, you can restore from that backup and it will be as if you've never lost any files whatsoever. So to activate this, we're gonna sw uh, scroll all the way to the top in the settings app here, click on your name and then we'll click on iCloud and then we have the option for iCloud backup and you're gonna to want to make sure that that is on. Now again, it may be possible that you need to purchase more storage as again, standard five gigabytes will not be enough. Chances are it will not be enough to back up your entire iPad. But again, just for one or $2 per month, you can have the reassurance of knowing that all of your data is safe at all times 
in the cloud. I really suggest this to all of my family and friends and think this is far more worth it uh, than paying for something like Apple Care. Now there's a few things I'm gonna show you in the notifications menu. Uh, and the first here is regarding uh, previews of notifications. Now you can have this set to always, when locked or never. Now, if you have this set to always, this means that any incoming notification will show in full on the home screen, including its content. So let's say a message, it will show who it's from, uh, as well as the actual message itself. However, if you have this set to when unlocked, the uh, content of the message will only show once the iPad is unlocked or once you've activated Touch ID. This is something that I definitely suggest using, also for privacy reasons, of course. And then my next suggestion is to scroll through all of your applications uh, as chances are all of your applications will want to send you notifications at some point, but in reality, chances are you don't need all of these notifications coming in. So my suggestion is to limit the number of applications that actually allow to, uh, that you want to send you notifications. You can see, for example, I turn off Disney Plus here. I simply don't allow it as they will, chances are, never show me a notification that I need to see. Uh, other applications such as your mail, uh, or messages that are actually important, you do want to see. So therefore go through your list of applications and disallow, applica uh, disallow notifications where they will not be necessary. Not only is this good for your battery life as it will activate your screen less often, it is also better for your mental well-being. And the same goes for background app refresh. So to access this, we're gonna go into general uh, and select background app refresh. Now as standard, this will be on for almost all of your applications. And I suggest turning this off for the apps that really don't need to be running in the background, such as your app store, uh, Apple store, or the uh, books application, certain games as well. Now you do have the option to turn it off for all notifications. I don't suggest selecting this as there are some applications such as the maps application or your mail application that you would probably want to be up to date every time. So just go through the list of applications and just like with notifications, turn off the ones that don't need to be constantly running. Again, great for battery life. Now let's take a look at Safari, starting with one setting. In the settings app, we're gonna scroll down to where it says Safari and then scroll down to here, the tab section. And this is where we can switch between the separate uh, tab bar view or the compact tab bar view. Now, by default, it'll have the separate uh, tab view bar uh, activated. And instead, I highly recommend switching to the compact tab bar view, as this is a much better utilization of the screen space as it creates for a more compact UI uh, and allows for more room dedicated to your websites. Now, you can also do this on your Mac, and I highly recommend doing this. Uh, and this is definitely the better way to go. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Safari app itself here. And as you can see, with this new compact uh, tab bar view, you'll see the tabs are listed alongside the URL bar rather than beneath it. So we have more room dedicated to the websites. And we can quickly switch between the tabs by simply tapping here in the uh, tab view bar here. Uh, and we can also see all of our open tabs by zooming out and pinching with three fingers. And this will then open all of your open tabs. And to close them, we can simply swipe to the left or press the little X in the top right corner. Now, earlier we looked at running uh, multiple applications side by side, but we can actually also run multiple, app uh, multiple windows of the same application. So to do this, we're gonna press on the three dotted menu and select the uh, split screen mode here. And let's bring up another Safari window. Now, as you can see, we have two windows of the same application running side by side. As you can see, we're currently looking at Google Flights. And let's say this is a uh, website that I access very often and wanna access more easily directly from the home screen. Well, to do this, we're gonna make sure that the uh, chosen website is open. And then we'll select on the share menu in the top right hand of the display. And then we can scroll down to where it says add to home screen. Now, as you can see, this will show us a preview of the icon as how it will show on the home screen. Uh, we can rename it, and then we can also uh, see the URL uh, that it will lead to. And then we'll go ahead and press add. And then if we go back to the home screen, you'll see that we have a new icon. In this case, that is a shortcut right to the Google Flights website. Now, this isn't an application, but it looks like an application that is so easy to find right on the home screen. This is also a useful way to save storage as this simply links to the website rather than downloading a whole uh, application from the App Store. And that is it for my ultimate guide to the iPad. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and if you're interested, I will leave the purchase links to all iPad models in the description. If you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPad Air review as well as my iPhone 13 ultimate guide. It never hurts to learn. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.